be productive with Lambda functions, there are two simple concepts you need to know about, versions and aliases. When you first create a new Lambda function, it is created with only one version named latest. This version always represents the latest code that was deployed to your function. So if you modify and deploy the code, the latest version will have these changes. You can also publish a new version of a Lambda function by going to Actions, Publish New Version on the AWS console. When you do, a new numerical version is created. Your first version will be one, and it will always have the code at the point of time when you published it. Unlike latest, which always changes, the numerical versions are immutable and will always have the same code. As you update your Lambda function more and more and publish new versions, you'll end up with a history of versions. You can also create an alias, which will point to a single version of your Lambda function. For example, we can create an alias called live and point it to version number eight. Then, even if you release version number nine, the live alias will keep pointing to version eight until you change it and point it to a different version. You can create many aliases and point them to different versions of your function. An alias can be very useful to use with API Gateway. When we have an API endpoint, we can point it to an alias we define, and then we can adjust the value of the alias to point to any version we choose. This way we can manage releases of our Lambda function. When we deploy a new version of our function, we can point the live alias to it. But then, if we think that something broke and we decide to roll back to an earlier version, we can go back in time to any of the previous versions of the function just by pointing the alias to it. And the change is immediate. If you used to deploy servers, you already know how long it can take. But with the Lambda function, the change is immediate and so is the rollback. Let's take a look at how it works by building a simple project using a Lambda function and API gateway. Let's create a new Lambda function, which will be a random number generator. When we just create the function, we don't have any versions besides the latest version, which points to the current state of the code. And we don't have any aliases yet as well. The first iteration of our function will be very primitive. It will always return the same result from our random number generator, which will be 42. We'll change the body to be a text value, so we can use it with API Gateway. This is the first version of our function. It's not very practical because the value will not be really random, but it will always be the same. But this is what we'll start with and we'll improve our function as we go. Now before creating any versions, let's start with an alias. We'll create an alias and we'll point it to the current version of the function, which is latest. So let's create our alias, we'll call it live, and we'll point it to our only version, which is currently latest. Also, let's create a trigger for this alias. You might notice that in the console, we're currently in the alias state of our function. If we'll go back to our function, now we're editing the latest version. But if we'll go to aliases and then click the name of the alias, we'll switch to the alias. And that's important because now we're going to create a new trigger. And we want our trigger to work with the alias and not with the latest version. So let's add a new trigger, which will be API Gateway, and it will generate a URL for us, which we can use to execute our function. So let's click on Add Trigger. We'll use the API Gateway trigger. We'll create a new API, and it will be completely open. Now API Gateway generated this endpoint for us. Now we can use this endpoint to execute our function. When we call this endpoint, we actually call the live alias, and our live alias points to the latest version. And this version always returns the value 42. So let's get back to our function, and now let's change the latest version to return 52. Let's deploy it, and then publish our first version. Notice that when we publish our first version, it doesn't ask us for the version name, only for a description which is optional but the name will be a numeric value that AWS will assign for us. So the first value will be the digit one, and then for every version we release, it will be incremented by one. So it will be two, three, etc. Also, when we publish a new version, it creates a snapshot of the code at that point of time. So while our latest version will always change to the current code, the numerical versions will point to a snapshot of the code when they were created. Let's take a look how it works in practice. We'll publish our first version, which will be version one. And again, you can see that in the console, it appears like this. If we'll click here, we'll go to the latest version, but now we're currently in version one. 
Also, let's change our alias. Instead of pointing it to the latest version, let's point it to version number one that we just created. We can do it by going to aliases and then selecting our alias, which is live, and then edit it. And now we have the option to point it to version number one. So let's save it and let's try to execute our function. As you remember, we changed it to the value 52. So now when we execute our function, we'll get 52 back. And it doesn't matter if we'll go to the code and let's say change the value here to 100. Because now our endpoint points to version number one. So it doesn't matter if we modify the latest code of our function. Because our live alias points to the snapshot of the function at version number one. And even if I'll refresh the page, we will still get 52 because this is the code of the function at that point of time. Let's adjust our function to actually return a random value. So first, let's Google how to return a random value from JavaScript. We'll use math.random and let's copy this code. And in our function, instead of returning a constant number, we'll switch it to the code we found and we'll define the max value, which will be 1000. So now we updated the latest version and let's also release version number two of our function that actually generates a random number instead of just returning the same number over and over. So we'll go to actions, publish new version. And again, it doesn't ask us for the name of the version. It will automatically assign it the name too. If we'll go back to our endpoint, it will still not change because we still didn't point our live alias to the new version. A live alias still points to version number one, which always returns 52. To change that, we'll need to go to aliases and point our live alias to version number two. So let's do it by clicking edit and changing from one to two. And now if we'll execute our function, it will return a random number between zero and 1000. Now let's improve our function even more. Instead of just using 1000 as our max value, let's change our lambda function to accept this max value as an argument from the URL. So we'll pass it the variable max. Let's say we set it to 50. Let's modify the new version of our function to treat this max value as the max number for our random value. So instead of returning values from 0 to 1000, we'll return values from 0 to the max 50. If you learned something from this video, please help it reach more people by hitting the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get updates about new videos. First, let's adjust the code of our function. So we'll go back to the code. Again, now we're modifying the latest version. Instead of setting max to a constant of 1000, we'll change it to the value of the variable that we pass through the URL. Our event object will contain the object query string parameters which will have all the arguments that we pass through the URL. So we'll use the max argument and we'll just pass it to our random number generator. Let's also update the response to include this value. So let's deploy it. Now what we want to do is create a new version of our function and point our alias to this new version. But instead of using the console, I want to show you a small tool that I built called Lambda Body. My AWS account is already created and as you can see, it loads the three Lambda functions that I have under my account. This is the new function we created, API Random Generator, and these are the versions that we have, one, two, and latest. Now that we updated the code of our function to pass the max argument through the URL, we need to publish a new version. So we saw how to do it using the console by going to Actions and Publish New Version, or you can do it from Lambda Body by simply clicking the plus button of the function. The nice thing about it is that you have all of your function in a single place so you don't need to constantly switch the function you want to change and it quickly generates the new version for you. We also saw how using the console you can go to aliases, choose the alias and then edit it and point it to the new version or if using Lambda Body you can simply point the live alias to a different version by clicking on the new version. So now that we switch it to version number three we can trigger the function and now we can see that the random value is returned between zero and the max value 50. And if we change it to, let's say 30, now it will change our function and the value will be between zero and 30. The reason I like to manually switch the version that I point to instead of automating it is because when you update the Lambda function in production, sometimes things break. And to illustrate it, let's go back to our function Let's modify our function to have an error. Before we return the response, let's throw an error and see what happens. So let's deploy our code 
And now let's create this new version and point our live alias to this broken version. Now if we'll try to execute our function, we'll get internal server error. No matter how many unit tests you have or how careful you are, sometimes it happens that you break the production server. But in my opinion, this is really the strength of Lambda functions. Because if we'll go back to our function and we can simply point it to version number three, and immediately it goes back to the last version that worked for us. There's no need to waiting until the server builds and until the new production environment goes up. The change is immediate. And we can switch it to any version we have. For example, we can switch it to version number one where it always returns the same value, 52. So basically we can go back to any snapshot of our function that used to work just by pointing it to the version that we want to use. Now that we know that version four is broken, let's create a new version that fixes it. So we'll go back to our function, to the code. We'll fix it by removing the error. We'll deploy it. Now we're going to publish a new version. And at this point, we know that version four is broken and version five works again. So we'll just point our function to version number five and the function works again as expected. You can try out Lambda Buddy with your own Lambda functions by creating a free account at lambdabuddy.com. In our example so far, we created a trigger for our Lambda function from the Lambda console. Now let's see how it works if we create an API gateway endpoint from the API gateway console. Let's see how we can point it directly to our alias or to a specific version. So for that, let's open the API gateway console first. Let's create a new API and we'll choose HTTP API. The first thing we're going to do for our API endpoint is to add an integration because we want the requests that this endpoint receives to go through our Lambda function. So we'll click add integration. We'll choose a Lambda function and this dropdown allows us to choose one of the Lambda functions that we have under our account. If we'll choose API random generator, then it will invoke this function, but with the latest version. But of course we don't want that because we want to use our live alias instead. So instead of choosing our function from the dropdown, let's delete it. And as you can see here, it says that we can either choose a Lambda function or enter its ARN. So let's go back to the Lambda console. Let's go to our alias. And in the live alias, the function ARN, which appears here, is the same ARN of the Lambda function, but we also have the alias appended at the end. And if we'll copy this value and then paste it at API gateway, this way, instead of pointing to the latest version of our Lambda function, it will point to the live alias. And even though it's recommended to point the API gateway to an alias, we can also do it with a version. So instead of going through an alias, we can point it directly to a version. And it works in a very similar way. If we'll go to a version, we'll choose a specific version. And as you can see in the function ARN over here, we have the version number appended at the end. So if we'll go to our API gateway integration and then Instead of live, we'll change it to two. Then this API gateway will point directly to our second version. Besides that, everything will work in the same way as the trigger that we created from our Lambda function. Please don't forget to like this video and a lot more practical videos about working with Lambda functions are coming soon. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel.